Welcome to the update. I'm Eleanor Quirk. The UN Security Council's held an emergency meeting following an Israeli airstrike in Lebanon. A top Hezbollah commander was among 14 people killed in the attacks in Beirut. The UN's Under Secretary General Rosemary De Carlo has briefed the meeting in New York. If things continue as they are, we risk seeing a conflagration that could dwarf even the devastation and suffering witnessed so far. It's not too late to avoid such folly. There is still room for diplomacy, which must be used without delay. Anthony Albanese met with Joe Biden at his private residence for what will likely be their last one-on-one talk before the US election. Regional security and trade high on the agenda. UWA Indo-Pacific relations expert Gordon Flake says it's an important meeting. It's reinforcing what has been a much improved Australia-US relationship, uh, a much strengthened alliance, and you've seen an awful lot of progress on issues like AUKUS, but beyond just security on cooperation in the whole realm of issues. And so and this is actually about cementing that. More accusers have come forward with allegations of rape and sexual assault against former Harrods owner and father of Princess Diana's boyfriend, Mohammed Al-Fayed. It comes after the BBC aired allegations that the late billionaire abused young women and girls who worked at the department store during his 25-year ownership. One of the lawyers representing dozens of his accusers, Dean Armstrong KC, has described Al-Fayed as a monster. I have many years of practice. I have never seen a case as horrific as this. This case combines some of the most horrific elements of the cases involving Jimmy Savile, Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein. And it's been revealed one of Australia's most wanted men is hiding in plain sight just a stone's throw from Federal Police Headquarters. Marky gang boss Angelo Pandelli was deported from Dubai two weeks ago and has since checked into a five-star hotel in Sydney. The underworld figure was wanted by Australian authorities while living overseas for alleged links to illegal drug supply, but no warrant has yet been issued for his arrest. Sport and entertainment are next. To sport and the Swans are through to the grand final after defeating Port Adelaide by 36 points. The final score at the SCG, 14-11-95 to 8-11-59. Swans star Chad Warner says the home crowd was instrumental in firing up the side. Oh, it's amazing. I think, um, first of all, the, I guess, joy when that final siren went and to hear the crowd, how much passion they have. I think they ride every bump uh, with us as well. So it's a massive uh, club and community effort as well. I couldn't be proud. And Cronulla has ended the Cowboys' finals campaign with a 26-18 win. To entertainment, Ashton Kutch is under fire after video resurfaced of him describing Sean Diddy Combs's now infamous parties and laughing. During a YouTube talk show appearance back in 2019, the actor was asked to describe the parties, which are now alleged to have been rife with drugs and inappropriate sexual conduct. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. So... Um, can't tell that one either. I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. We became fast friends and we used to just like hang out, watch football together. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has been slammed for creating his own fake news. The presidential hopeful sharing a doctored image on social media of Kamala Harris allegedly posing with Diddy at one of his parties. The real photo actually of Harris with her ex, Montel Williams, and his daughter at a fundraiser. And that's the latest from the Nova podcast team. We'll see you again soon for another episode of The Update.